Mac, have you ever just been going about your day and you reach into your pocket and pull out screws that screws. you know belong somewhere? Okay. But definitely not in your pocket. <laughs> so nothing is more alarming than when you finish a project and there's several screws left over and you're like, mm -hmm. I know they're going to leave me a couple spares, but not 17. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite building or hanging too many things these days. However, you with a small child, yes. I'm sure are doing a lot of that. So no, I can't say that uh, I find screws in my in my pocket that often. Yes, I have been recently selling some things on Facebook Marketplace, so I have to take furniture apart. I've been building newer, smaller furniture, and I was very concerned saying, uh-oh, I feel like someone either did not get the proper screws that go with their shelves, or I didn't build my shelves properly. Yeah, it could be one or or, or the other. I, I have bought in furniture before off Craigslist. Actually, my bedroom set is a beautifully restored wooden uh set that i get i think a woman just does it on the side oh um and i've had to replace some hardware on it a couple times but you just go to the the home of deep and they they got some of your stuff the home of deep the home of deep the nice italian store down the street there so if you're the person that bought the shelf for me and it's missing parts it's missing hardware sorry <laughs> do you get bad reviews on facebook marketplace i'm sure you get like a star rating i don't like that one bit Oh, what? You're going to lose a star for every screw missing. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. One, goo, three, yeah! Mac and goo! Jaws three! Mac and goo! King of Queens! Mac and goo! Meryl Street! Mac and goo! Entertainment! I'm goo! And I'm Mac. And the humans are dead. <laughs> humans are dead. Yeah, today, yeah. Uh, in light of Transformers 1 crushing it uh, via reviews and oh, reviews, money. yes. Okay. I'd say it's doing pretty well with the, with the money, too. Okay. Um, and then in light of the Wild Robot also hitting theaters this weekend, which is getting extremely, extremely high reviews, Goo and I said, Let's talk robots. We said robots are so hot right now. We on have to jump on the robot bandwagon <laughs> right now and do one of our classic Mac and Goo drafts. We got to beat the rest of the podcast world to the punch. Best media robots. Best robots in media. Best robots in TV and film. Pop Whatever you want to call robots. it. Sure. Uh, if one of us wants to use uh, literature, a book, if fine. Ooh. Oh, Fine. well, I mean, neither of us know books, so that doesn't well, I was really gonna help. say, I don't have any. No, I don't have any. <laughs> All right, so that's out of the way really early. But, Mac, before I hit the theme song, let yeah. me ask you this. Yeah. Did you jot down what the rules are? Yeah, I got some parameters here yeah. for this Mac and Goo draft. So we will be drafting 10 apiece. That's 20 total. Uh, the parameters, at least from what Goo and I texted earlier, which these are still a little unclear, uh, droids are a okay, so like yes. Star Wars droids, those count, those are robots. However, synthesoids like uh, Bishop from Alien or Data from Star Trek or Vision from Marvel and pretty much anyone from Blade Runner, those are no good. They can't really be like a humanoid, they can't appear as human uh, as like oh. a human. Oh no, so, so like T800s out. No, uh, I no, don't have yeah. any fucking robots then. Ava from Ex Machina out. So those are all in this under the same thing. You, if, well, if, what if at one point, say their skin falls off? No, no, no. no. Oh, you can't, no. You can't, you can't draft the T-800 or 1,000 goose. So I hope you have 20. Uh, no <laughs> RoboCop either, because if you have, if you lived life as a human at some point, you're out. If you got human memories, you're out. So RoboCop, see ya. No, no chance there. Uh, no Zords or Zord type things where, Humans are controlling you. Otherwise, you're not really a robot. You're a toy, right? You're just I would say more toy. like a vehicle. Yeah, sure. That works, too. And that also rules out uh, Osimo from South Park. That's, right. that, that one doesn't count. And then, of course, we have to answer the, the Transformers conundrum, the great Transformers conundrum that ruins all of these robot podcasts. Uh, Goo and I said, yes, thumbs up. They're obviously aliens, but they're also robots. They could be both. They could be the same. They could, they could, that'll work for us. But we did make a stipulation. 
No okay, more than so, two, two Transformers. Otherwise, we'll just have a team of Transformers. I am in a real sticky situation. Okay. All right. Okay, so I guess I'll just list off some of the robots that I'm not allowed to draft. Okay, sure. Um, so my number one pick was going to be the Buffy bot from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was a robot created by Spike. It's a sex bot uh, that is programmed and is eventually used as a decoy for Buffy. Were you not privy to the conversation between you and I earlier? I thought it was as long as it's more than 50% robot, we're all set. This no. is a robot. It says here, Buffy bot. They can't. <laughs> They can't be cosplaying as a human. Uh, it's just, if you want to fuck it, we can't draft it, basically. Okay, so I guess I also can't take the fembots from Austin nope. Powers. Those are out. Those Machine are out. Machine Gun Jubblies, my man. I know. I'm telling you, this is this is the, this is is the sort of the rule you came up with. Don't blame me. I can't take, well, actually, there's a lot of things I can take. That's not yeah, bad. There's still a lot of stuff there. No, T8, no T-800, no T-1000. Out. Out, no uh, Terminatrix, the uh, the hot female Terminator. All right, I guess this isn't okay. I can play along. I just got okay. rid of one of All my right. categories was sexy robots. Right. I lost a lot no, of my sexy I, robots. I hear you. Yeah, and that's gonna play to a certain crowd. Unfortunately, those tuning in for sex robots, you're you're not gonna have a good experience today. And now, time for what you've all been waiting for. The year right now when the streets are paved with gold. We don't want no dead hoofers, only ducky shine crackers. A funny duddy may do, but no gobbledygook. Only the best of the best will be taken in the draft. But not just any old draft. It's the Mac and Boo draft. But Mac, let's say the scenario here. Mm -hmm. Why we are drafting these robots. Oh, is you're right. We are both at the top of our castles. Sure. And we need to take these robots to protect, attack, and possibly uh, so, amuse. So let me get this straight. Yes. When you hear robots, you yes. think medieval castles. Yeah, we're doing a fucking <laughs> 10 robot <laughs> army that will serve a purpose. Yeah, y y the, yeah, protect and serve. I don't know, maybe make some fans. You decide what your team is built for. Now, the bigger question is here, do you want the number one pick or do you want number two or should we flip for it? Now that the Buffy bot is out, I don't really care. I don't particularly care either. Do you want me to do, do a little flippy thing flip on my coin. phone? Flip a okay. coin. Oh, a coin. I don't know if I have a coin. That's, that's you don't a have ask. a pocket full of nickels? <laughs> I'm going to go on to an online random generator here. Oh, there no, I'm going to go, go. Coin, coinflip.com. Is that a thing? Okay. One minute, 37 seconds later. Just lie and sell me one right, of the pick, names. Pick a number between one... One in a hundred, and if the random number is is over it, you win. If the random, if you go over the number, I win. Forty two. It's ninety six, so you okay. win. Okay, okay, I will pick first. All right, first. Who okay. gets first pick? I get second and third, and there you go. That's how a serpentine. I draft think this works. might be the number one overall pick. I believe that this is a robot that can be your friend and also that can defend you and attack if they need to. And that is the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant is a 50-foot-tall autonomous metal man from another world that crash-landed on Earth before becoming friends with a young boy named Hogworth. He is pleasant, he is inquisitive, and he has a very nice demeanor. Cool. Not going to lie, that was number one on my board as well. I think he's the most unique mm -hmm. robot of all the ones you could, you could draft from here. And to your point, very versatile. Um, there might be lesser versions of this, but I, I feel like he's the a one. If you're making, I think there might be a couple other in that top tier, but I also had the iron giant as the top selection today. Are so you upset that I took it? No, I figured that you would go that route. I, 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 I didn't doubt that you would take that. Uh, all right. So in lieu of not getting the iron giant, I feel like you have to tech, take the other one that can help you and also be your friend and, Probably no, definitely more popular, but a little bit cheating. I gotta take Optimus Prime. He's here. a good he's, one. He's the maybe the coolest looking one. You get a transformer, he gets two forms, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Two forms. So um you so had if to, you have to move, he can help you with his truck if, version. If I would say if there was one detraction about uh the Iron Giant, not a great leader. Not a great leader. Optimus Prime better leader. So if we're looking for a squad leader here, Optimus Prime better. 
give me OP with my number one pick. Number two, mm-hmm. I feel like I got to take him because I I don't think he gets back to me. The best Star Wars droid we've ever ah! seen. I'm taking K2SO here. Yeah. He's witty. He's feisty. He's also as strong as fuck. Not maybe the tallest robot on the list, not the girthiest robot on the list, but I feel like he's pretty versatile and he'll work well with the squad. Yeah, there is no other Star Wars droid that really makes me want to take them now. Like, there are some other ones that are pretty good, but K2SO, sassy, and he is competent. He knows what he's doing. He can join the battle, and he can just do it in a very smooth way. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like your list has to have a Star Wars droid at some point. Yeah. We're not taking that bitch-ass C-3PO. C-3PO is nowhere Obviously, near my Obviously, R2's list. on the board, but if you're... As cool as he is, he can't do that many things. So mm-hmm. taking him too high is is a no-go. So I, I went K2. Okay, so I'm going to go from maybe getting the friendliest robot possible to now getting a real dickhead. And that is Bender from Futurama. Oh, all right. Yeah, Just one one that'll push my buttons. You know? That's right. Make, like, what if... really bite my thumb. What if Bender is the one that storms the castle? Or we at least get him up there. He's in a really, he's in a razzle ya. Yeah, it'll really annoy the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. So if we're doing uh, a battle of open mic nights between our, our units, you might win that. Although K2, not bad. Not bad at right, open but mics. Bender was also created to bend metal. I feel like all of your robots, metal. <laughs> all right. Yeah, true. That's at least true, so far. True I'd thing. say. He is the smallest robot taken so far, though. So really might get his ass kicked. Okay, so I think I just found a loophole, and you telling me that I can't get sexy robots. Okay. The last sexy robot that I have on the board for myself is Rosie from the Jetsons. In you can you can have her. Yep, I like that. It's a good selection. Rosie is the maid or the housekeeper of the Jetsons family. She is an older model, uh, XB five hundred, but she was all that Jane could afford. Yeah, and to me, you, you need a, a ro- and some of these robots will do everything you say. Some of them are l- like anarchy or may not obey. Maybe you don't have the gym badge required uh, uh, f- to get the, the robot to to listen to you. But Rosie, Rosie's going to do whatever you want her to do. She's your mate, you know? As you long need, as I'm not Mr. J, I'm fine. You know, in the Army, there's people that work on water supply. Maybe that's what she's doing for your squad there. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, a, it's an iconic pick. I like um, my team. All right, so I, I you left my number four on the board here, Goose. So I, I'm going to go ahead and take Baymax from Big Hero 6. Yep, this nice big, one. fluffy, lovable fella with an awesome little mech suit, Iron Man-style type of suit here. And, you know, I missed out on the Iron Giant for being real comforting friend type. Baymax might be able to fill that role for my squad here. Uh, and now I'm not so sure what to take next because there's a lot of i maybe i go megatron but i already got optimus prime and I oh you can't put those two guys i don't on the need same some team. infighting you on my you squad you can't put the friction on your team i don't need infighting at least not off the jump here so you know what i'm gonna do here goo is take my my biggest sleeper pick at the at the top of the fourth round here the house from smart house the Fuck, disney channel that original. was my next pick because i <laughs> yeah. <think to> myself <laughs> yeah I'm going to be stuck in a castle. Might yeah. as well make it a smart castle. <laughs> yeah. And look, it takes on the form of an overbearing mother, but uh, so you good. need people to fill roles like you just said. Yeah, and honestly, downright terrifying. Yeah. The, the house from Smart House would could scare all of these things we're drafting right now. So I love that. Katie Seagal, oh, of course, voicing, voicing the uh, the AI there. But the house from Smart House, what a, what a pick. What an amazing pick. That was my next pick. The one that I was going to take right after that is, once again, we're going to need people to fill roles. And I think that Kit from Knight Rider could fill the role of driving me around. Yeah. And, you know, he is a vehicle, so he's a bit limited, but he he can do it. You don't need someone driving him in order for him to drive. So it's a, it's a solid pick. He's iconic. There's a whole generation that grew up on that robot. So I, I don't mind that, Goo. And then, wow. That really threw me off. <laughs> I do need a good fighter. Mm. And while he's not the most powerful of the Autobots, he makes up for it with his bottomless stick to <laughs> and bravery and determination. Okay. Sure. And that sure. is Bumblebee. Ah, uh, all right. Yep. So 
I was considering pairing him with Optimus Prime, so you kind of stole that one two combo for me. That's a that's a solid selection right there. You know, he's not to your point, he's not the biggest out there, but he's got the most heart out of any of these robots. If any of these robots were to have a heart, it would be Bumblebee. Look, Team USA could have had Jalen Brown, but they <laughs> said no, we want Derek White. Yeah, there you go. You just got your Derek White. <laughs> it's all about spacing. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. Um I I don't know if this one counts. I think it does because of the way they frame it. Can I take Mecha Godzilla? Fuck. Okay. So All this right. is a, a tough one because yeah. I know that, and I have him on my list. I'm going to let you have Mecha Godzilla. Okay. But it is made with the skull of Ghidorah. Yeah. So so it's Ghidorah's like brain. Yeah. Essentially operating Mecha Godzilla. So it's a bit of a gray area. But it's not humans controlling it, right. so I felt like that was okay. So what we'll say is that if the people out there don't agree with your pick, just don't vote for Mac. He cheated. <laughs> but who allowed it? I asked before. No, I no, I did not allow it. I, if anything, said don't do it. Um, you know, good, good point with taking your your uh, your sort of Dustin Pedroia dirt dog there with Bumblebee. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I need a worker bot here, one that will work maybe for thousands of hours and years mm -hmm. on end on end. I'm going to take Wally here. Oh, Wally, Wally. Maybe a little bit of a sympathetic vote. Isn't going to be huge in a battle, but he'll do the little things there. The little things that maybe the 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 big guys like Optus Prime ain't going to do. They're not going to sink sink down to that level. So give me Wally here. All right. I'm going to take a I feel like, you know, I'm a good leader, but I'm not a good strategist. So what I'm going to do is take the leader of my army, and that is Ultron, the Ooh. ultimate strategist. Yeah. Yeah, I considered taking him there, but I don't know. He's he's kind of a really bad guy. So Might maybe, he turn against me and kill yeah, me? That's maybe. what I was considering. Maybe, maybe he purposely lampoons your team, and maybe mine as well, but then he's just going to take you over. He's going to kill you, possibly. Like, what if he beats you first and then kills me? I still win, right? I don't know. That that's a, sort of a murder suicide situation. No one really wins there. Well, no, I would have the victory for at least a couple minutes I before he so. takes me out. I guess so. You could you could say that. All right. I will now take maybe the most iconic robot of the 80s. I wanted a sports car, but you got me a walking trash can. That of course is Polly and Rocky 4. Give me the robot from Rocky 4 that you are able to change uh -oh from a man to a lady all right <laughs> gotta be honest was not on my list wasn't on my list so you threw a dart and you hit a bullseye i guess uh i got nothing to say about that robot. happy birthday polly polly had sex with that robot right i mean there's no doubt about it what else is that old fuck doing <laughs> are you a pleasure robot <laughs> so it's to me now right you took back to back there Two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds so far. And you just went back to back, Yes, correct? I just went back okay. to back. So seven and eight for me here. Um, this is who I thought you were setting up here. Maybe the most iconic robot of the 80s, Johnny Five. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Five's Five, a good one. Dude. Yep. And not for nothing, uh, became a character in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Had some pretty cool laser eyes. So he's, he's capable in a battle. He's got some hijinks. If you're looking for some hijinks, you know, they talk about it in Always Sunny. Your, your, your group needs a wild card. Here's my wild card pick right there. So give me Johnny Five. It's a good one. Uh, and then I'm going to take, I don't know if I get a whole batch of them or just one. I'm going to take the Sentinel from X-Men. Give me the X-Men Sentinels here or just one. They're, they're capable. They're, yeah. They're, they're, you got to tell them what to do, but at least they'll go do it. It's like a faceless uh, warrior bot. It does evolve. I will give you that. So I like the idea. So are we allowed to say if we take something like that, we can have a couple of them? I, I just one? want one, I think. Well, it doesn't take up a slot, though, right? It's just it's one slot. Yeah. All right. So, say I get like three Sentinels or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair. Okay. So I guess what I will do, I will take my droid and... Like K2SO is my favorite, but the best, yeah, you know, it, the one that has done the most in Star Wars history is R2-D2. I will take R2-D2. Yeah, good pick. Iconic. Um, there are going to be people out there that are pissed that he didn't go until the eighth round. But listen, if you're talking about powerful robots, he's not at the top. 
but he is useful. He thinks outside the box, mm -hmm. and you can get him to kind of slither into areas that maybe other robots can't. Okay, let's see here. What do we have going on? We have two more spots that we have to fill, and you just took the Sentinels. I would like another droid. Okay. And this is almost like a K2SO light. Sure. And it's IG-11. The uh, droid, the nurse droid, say yep. if, if I have my four-year-old son in my castle, this is a good little pick here, <laughs> uh, voiced by Taika Waititi in The Mandalorian Season 1. Yeah, so even if, maybe if he's not in battle mode, you can at least have him take care of your son while you're leading your robots into battle. Yeah. Or if he is in battle mode, he's pretty lethal. So yeah. That's that's not a bad selection. He's at all. willing so to just explode. He's like, he's why? What is the kamikaze? There he's a he's a kamikaze. Yeah, he'll do he'll do whatever it takes for for the goose squad. So that's not yeah. bad. What's what's that leave you with nine? So you got yep, Mr. I got one left? more. Yep. All right, this sets up perfectly. So I'm gonna say, take my second transformer here. Uh, it's it's from the Beast Wars era of Transformer. Optimus Primal, the gorilla oh, version. Oh, that's a good the one. Eight version, I guess, of, of Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime's cousin, mm -hmm. son, grandfather. I don't know. They're in, they're in the Prime lineage. There, he just looks super cool as a gorilla or in in robot form. So, I'll give me Primal. Uh, and then the close out here, Goo. I think it counts because it was on infomercials and it's been in television shows. Give me the Roomba with my last pick. The Roomba. Like the vacuum? The vacuum robot. I got to clean up the battlefield after I kill all your Okay, robots. so I have a shark, and I'll tell you right now, those things are the absolute balls. It's I The cleanup's You might have hands. just won the whole draft by taking the, the vacuum Roomba. cleaner. <laughs> and if there, there are attachments, maybe I go a little Officer Doofy style there. Who knows? <laughs> we said no sex robots, Mac. Oh, fuck, you're right here. All right, so with my last pick, I'm between a couple here. I do, I like the idea that you have of having a couple Sentinels. So, like, I would take a couple foot soldiers, maybe. They mm. were turned into robots in 1987 because it's not violent to kill robots, apparently. <laughs> um, I already have my droids. I, I think I'm going to go with Mecha Streisand. And this is <laughs> the robot created by South Park. And the only way for you to destroy, to, to destroy Mecha Streisand is to have a, a giant Robert Smith. I don't recall what the what it was, actually. Yeah, this is a solid pick. I like this. This is, a, this is one off the beaten path here for sure. Robert Smith. Yes, you need to have a an equally sized Robert Smith who turns into a moth, I believe. <laughs> So the the final picks for both squads are Barbara Streisand and, no, and the Mecha vacuum. Streisand. Mecha Sorry. Streisand. Well, you could have Barbara if you'd like as well. Uh, all right. So let's do a little list of honorables here. The one's biggest snub for sure is Megatron, but it has some of that uh, Ultron vibe. So if you put Ultron and Megatron together, they were for sure going to I like Ultron's you. mind more. Yeah, I hear you on that. But that's that's probably the largest snub. A little surprised that you didn't take Eva. Once I took Wally because Eve nah, is pretty cool wanna, looking, a little more futuristic looking, a little more capable. Mm -hmm. Also, Starscream, saw, solid Transformer. Um, I considered Sonny, the robot from iRobot. That's, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good one. Nearly indestructible and thinks for his own as well. And then you had some classic ones, Goo, like B9 from Lost in Space. Obviously, one of the more iconic ones. Uh, I considered in the in the mold of Mecha Streisand, uh, just a bit smaller. Dot Matrix from Spaceballs. Dot Matrix know? was another one. That was one when you didn't get K2SO. Similar sassiness. Yeah, for sure. Could definitely could definitely sass someone out. Also, Mr. Irrelevant was almost the intergalactic robots from the Beastie Boys music video. Okay. All right. Yeah. What did you get? A handful of those? How many were there in, the, in that video? Mm, a couple. Yeah. A couple. Uh, I enough. also, for my droid, I didn't want to have two R2-D2s, and BB-8 mm -hmm. is just a worse version. He's just a yeah. soccer ball. Right. Moves right. a little bit quicker. I will say that, but. I feel like one boot from K2SO, though, and BB's out. He's he's toast. I'll um, also say this. For you telling me that I can't get my sex robots, I did a pretty good job. <laughs> so at least if you're going to lose the battle, at least you'll you'll have a. Good night ahead of you, or good night well, before. I, I got one Rosie. Last, I got one last Rosie. team dinner. Rosie's got these. <laughs> uh, one I was going to consider to take if I couldn't get the house for Smart House or the Roomba was the Mars Rover Curiosity. Um, 
but I think it's you. It, people are controlling it. I'm pretty sure. I don't know enough about it, but I considered it. Yeah, and then the other one that was a classic is uh, Hal 9000 from Space yeah, Odyssey. A Space Odyssey, and then you had uh, Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet that ended up in a bunch of other um, film and television things as as homages as well. But not or the capable. robot from uh, Friends, Mac from Mac and No, I'm sorry, Joey played Mac, right? And then Cheese was the robot. <laughs> yeah, you're right on it. You're. You're the resident friends expert here. All right, Mac, my robot team, the team that'll destroy you with their <laughs> friendship and hilarity is the Iron Giant, Bender from Futurama, Rosie from the Jetsons, Kit from Knight Rider, Bumblebee from Transformers, Ultron from the MCU, the robot from Rocky IV, R2-D2, IG-11, and Mecha Streisand. <laughs> And my squad is Optimus Prime, K2SO, Baymax from Big Hero 6, The House from Smart House, Mecha Godzilla, Wally, -E, Johnny Five, a Sentinel, or maybe two from X Men, Optimus Primal, and of course, the Roomba to clean up all Goo's broken parts. So head over to social media right now. Tell us who you think won this robot draft. Are there any that we forgot about who was overdrafted? And what would you do with a robot? Yeah, tell us what robot you would like to spend the most time with. <laughs> you did ask, to your credit, about uh, Weird Science. What's her name? Lisa? Yeah. Kelly so, LeBrock. So if we had allowed that, we would have just drafted all of the hottest robots, which you kind of did anyways. I mean, Lisa's more of a Frankenstein, though, if you ask me. Yeah, but, I mean, if you can touch skin, it's it's all one and the same. I will say this, though, is that when I was going down the rabbit hole of the Buffy bot, I was like, what is this fucking storyline? So you were going to have Lisa, Buffy Bot, and Fembots right off the rip. <laughs> First three picks. I would have done three in a row. <laughs> Machine gun job, please. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, Let's get, get into, into Mac, 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 and Mac. Mac, Mac. could be anything. It could be a boat. And this week, Mac, you see the news? You hear about this? A Joro spider was spotted on Newberry Street in, I'm sorry, uh, Boston's Beacon Hill in this past week in Massachusetts. This is a giant venomous arachnid. The Juro spider is recognizable for its vibrant yellow colors and legs that can grow up to four inches long. They fly by releasing silk threads into the air that allow them to parachute into the wind. The Juros are an invasive species that were spotted in Georgia in 2014 and have rapidly spread along the south. The venom is weak. So when bites do occur, they're less painful than a bee sting and only produce localized pain. The redness that dissipates quickly without intervention. So two things. In general, yes. spiders are your friends. They're going to eat all the other insects. Take care of that. Um, but uh, on a a more micro level, uh, a personal level, no one loves spiders. No They're creepy looking. Um, for me, it's like a size thing. So the smaller the spider is, the less I am turned. The smaller the spider, the tastier the feast. Uh, like I'm not spiders don't really scare me. I've been in mm -hmm. plenty of basements, run into plenty of spider webs. However, I've crawled around, pre I've crawled around plenty of basements. If guys. each of those legs are four inches, that means it's eight inches wide, just leg wise, and then the body a little bit. So that's a little intimidating. And then if it was floating above my head, I don't like that. Yeah. Maybe if it was like, you know, waist level, I'm not too afraid of that. But I don't know what to do when spiders are above my head. I'm not trained for that. So that's that's a little worrisome because then then spiders could be anywhere. They could be anywhere probably anyways. But I, I'm out of floating spiders in. And flying spiders is, uh, I don't know, somehow less scary than floating spiders. Floating spiders, there's no rhyme or reason to where they're going to end up. Flying spiders, at least you can sort of maybe track them. I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking skeet shooting here. So I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm out on this spider. That's for sure. Yeah, my mother for the past couple of weeks had a giant spider just chilling on her porch, and they just they were doing nothing about it. And I went yeah, it's over there. Eat the other stuff. It was a giant spider. Yeah, because it's been eating so many things. Yeah, but then whenever anybody went to the house, they had to sprint along the porch. <laughs> they didn't have to. Yeah, my mother's like, oh, it wasn't bothering anybody. I'm like, it yeah. bothered literally everybody. Mama Antonelli gets it. Well, too bad for her. I smashed it with oh, a shovel. come on. You didn't need a shovel. You could have just used your hand. 
I felt like the uh, shovel slayer from Home Alone. I gave it the two hand right to the face. You just did a little a little chancla, a little flip flop. A chancla? What's a chancla? Oh, you know what a chancla is? No idea. It's basically uh, it's it's a Hispanic type of thing. It's basically oh. what they call a a flip flop type of thing. But uh, I smashed that some bitch. People get threatened to get hit with chanclas. Oh, personally. oh, is that kind of like a, an Italian wooden spoon? Essentially, yeah. Okay. We're all except, coming together like a world. A shoe, a, shoe, a, a, a flip-flop type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying just if you see a spider, always kill it? Do you think the house from Smart House would welcome spiders or kill spiders? Eat spiders, I would assume. Consume spiders. That's yeah, that's how it becomes more smart. Okay, sure. Sure. Do you think it gains, the house gains web abilities when it when it eats certain spiders? <laughs> just takes on the form of what it just <laughs> ate? Now, I will say about this thing here, though, is uh, I'm happy that it's not a murder hornet. That was the big scare a couple years ago yep. of these uh, giant one-inch hornets that that could eat you. Well, I, I, I'm ins insects in general don't really scare me. Although spiders technically not insects, arachnids go whole whole other category. Altogether. Have you seen one of these murder hornets take out a whole beehive? Yeah, whatever. What are you gonna do, Mother Nature? <laughs> If I see one of those some bitches, I am jumping into the sea. <laughs> I don't know. See, if it's moving and flying, I don't know if you can generate enough force with that shovel to to actually kill the murder hornet. Well, the murder hornet's so big that how does it move? Is it more clumsy? Is it like when uh when Ant Man turns into Giant Man? It's more you can see what it's doing more. Yeah, you could you could probably like I. It's sometimes hard to kill a fly because they're small. Yeah, it's probably easier to kill those things because they're a bigger target. You can like use a tennis racket if you have to. Yeah, right. There you go. And I always have a tennis. <laughs> I always have a tennis racket in my back pocket. They make those though. zap ones, the tennis rack. Do those actually zappers. work though? Oh yeah. You ever put your tongue on one of those things? <laughs> I mean, more for killing an insect. Yeah, yeah, for sure it does. I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> get these get these fucking things out of my face. Sure. All right, Mac. Where can the people find us? You can find us on Twitter and on Instagram at Mac and Goo Podcast. Every other platform where you're Mac ampersand goo, that's Mac Shift Seven Goo. It includes Facebook, Stitcher, TuneIn, Castbox, Spreaker, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Radio. We're on Spotify, but more importantly, we're on Apple Podcasts. Get on there, rate, review, subscribe, five stars. If you do that, we'll get you a free Mac and Goo T-shirt from the folks over at Watertown Sportswear. That's Watertown Sportswear on 34 Mott Auburn Street in Watertown. WatertownSportswear.com. Expert screen printing and embroidery. Tell Alexa right now to play the Mac and Goo Movie Club. On iHeartRadio. Hey, Alexa. That's pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> Tpublic.com. Merch. <laughs> the holiday season's coming up. Go buy some merch. Oh, goo. Yeah. Before we get to the holiday season, we got spooky season coming up. And don't get me wrong. I I go nuts for a golf girl. I like pumpkin spice. I went to Salem, Massachusetts the other day. And boy, do why? I fucking hate that place. Yeah. Why? What are you I doing? I met a friend for lunch, a friend who was visiting. Brag. This was the last day. Uh, met his son, very cute kid. Uh, big squash on him, like Raffi. Big uh, squash. Yeah. So you you guys get that in common. Um, I was got there at about ten forty five in the morning on a Monday, mm -hmm. and the city was fucking packed. More than a month from Halloween. Explain that to me. How's that a thing? Last time I went to Salem, I had a great meatball sandwich. Mm, I ate uh, pizza at. Oh. Uh, I forget the name of the place. Maybe I had, we went to the same place. I had a I had a pickle Rick pizza. It oh. was pickle, yep. bacon bits, ranch, and cheese. Delicious. It was sounds fucking delicious. Great. That sounds great. Really good. Yeah. Big uh, my wife and I thought about possibly moving to Salem, and we checked it out on a Sunday, late November, so not spooky season. Yep. And it took us a very long time to get in there because there is one way in and one way out. Yeah, you you'd be better off with like Danvers or Peabody, um, but Salem, especially that downtown area, it really is just one way in and out. It's it's not enjoyable whatsoever. Also, uh, I don't like witches, so uh, flying saucer pizza is where I went. Oh, I don't Pretty think good. I went there. Pretty, I'll rec I, They had uh, I wanted to try like six of their pizzas. So if you if you happen to be in shitty Salem this time of year, go to Flying Saucer Pizza. Oh, the other day I was getting uh, I was getting tacos with my family, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, I saw across the way uh, there were four friends that ordered every plate of the tacos because four tacos came with each plate, and then they yep. shared them. And I said, "Wish I had friends." Were you at Taqueria Amiga? I was. Yeah, I just had that the other night myself. 
Did you eat there or did you take it home? No, we had it at the fire station, so we had it. You have to up. eat there. So I know it's better. I, yeah. I love taking it home. It's my favorite taco place. It's in Waltham. So good. Very, very small so side cheap, street. Too. Um, I ate it there for the first time in years. Mm. Fucking mind blown. You know what I my favorite item on the menu actually What's is? What's that? They're they're small quesadillas because it's almost like a okay. large taco. Yeah. And and it everything is just portioned well in there. The large quesadillas are overwhelming. But essentially, their small quesadilla is like folded in half. It's like a big taco, big yeah. soft taco. I can't recommend it enough. I mean, I I just do the uh, taco especialis with carnitas. Yeah, I way. love I love the carnitas or the uh, what's what's the um, basically the spicy version of carnitas. Oh, Gross I'm not sure. It's like the it's like braised, right? Yeah, I forget. But the name also, of it. they might have the best hot sauce around. It's. It's honestly a little too spicy for me. Well, so, I, I put a little bit, a, a little bit. I think it's actually a little weak spice wise, but flavor wise, it's amazing. But it is a step above like Buffalo. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. a little spicier than that. So I can handle I, I'll do a, I'll do a couple drops, but it is the flavor is nice. Also, there's nothing better than eating hot chips. Yeah, I totally agree. And by the way, those, those tacos, especially Ali, the, you get four tacos. It's mm -hmm. like five bucks. It's a well, it's like 12 bucks or 15 bucks. It's not five bucks. Are you sure? Why'd they give you the firefighter special? We, Look at we Mac. May, we may have. I don't know. I didn't pay very much for mine. Looks like Mac went in there and held them ransom for tacos. I didn't pick it up. I'm not the junior man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So check us out at the start of next week. We'll have a news dump. Tons of trailers. Ooh, yes, sir. And then at the end of next week, maybe uh, Joker Folly had to. Yeah. Fucking wedding is horse shit. Tuesdays are goose days. I abuse kangaroos. I Tim Burton. Please flip the cassette over to side B to continue the adventure. Now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines.